this evening. My name is Reverend Chantel Mason and I'm the Bath Abbey pastor and so it's a real delight to host this beautiful service as we come together. Many of us have travelled a long way to be at this service this evening but however far you have travelled you are most warmly welcome. And I'd like to take a moment to offer some very particular welcomes this evening to recognise who we have amongst us. So firstly, a very special welcome to Emu Tecla granddaughter of Latin Egypt Roy. It's wonderful to have you with us. Thank you so much for being present with us this evening. And also a very warm welcome to the Right Worshipful, the Mayor of And a heartfelt welcome to all those joining us this evening from the Ethiopian Orthodox Churches in London, Bristol, and across Baal, and across other areas of the UK. It's a delight to welcome you for this Ethiopian Orthodox service. A warm welcome also to William Heath, co-chair of Fairfield House. And all of you who were with us from Fairfield House, especially those of you, the generous volunteers who keep Fairfield House going and have made a sacred garden on the Ethiopian Chapel site. The Emperor Haley Selassie's memory lives on around the world, but most especially among the Fairfield House community. On behalf of Bath Abbey, I extend the warmest of welcomes to those friends amongst us from all faiths and none. Bath Abbey is a place of warm hospitality for everyone. And I hope you sense that warmth as we gather together. Welcome also to those representing the council and other key institutions, and including Bath Spa University. Finally, a very warm welcome also to Colleen Swaby and the Baal Ethnic Minority Senior Citizens Association staff who have used Fairfield House as their base for the past 27 years. To all of you who gather here this evening to recognise the importance of the beautiful legacy of M. Paley Selassie, head of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. This evening we come together as one community. Although many of us meet here for the first time, initially as strangers, in fact we gather here together as friends, joined together by the moral and spiritual gift given to us. And there is something very fitting about this, as we remember the story of the Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie, a remarkable African royal figure who welcomed the stranger and left to us such a powerful legacy. And as we gather for this special church service, we recognise that God welcomes all of us, gives dignity to all people, and in fact calls us friends. And so it truly is a great joy for Bob Abbey to host this very special service and I really am delighted that you have all given this time to be able to join us. Just a few practical matters to mention before we begin. If I could just ask you now to check that your mobile phone is switched off and also to refrain from taking any photographs during the service, that would be greatly appreciated. There will be photographs taken by a photographer at particular points appropriate in the service and these will be made available through social media and do contact the festival organisers if you would like any photographs. 
at the end of the service, if I could ask you, with appropriate distancing, as feels most comfortable, but aware of the needs of those around you, to exit the same door that you came in as you were welcomed at the West School. And as we all play our part now in rebuilding our communities post-pandemic, we look forward to partnering with you again in fostering goodwill and working for the common good. May we all continue to build on the legacy of Haley Selassie in his tireless work as we build that stronger after the pandemic. So once again, I'm truly thrilled to welcome you this evening and may you know the peace and the stillness of this Abbey. In a moment, I will hand over to Dr. Sean Sobers, but let us pray as we begin. Loving God, we thank you that you are love itself and you welcome every person to know you. You draw us together as individuals into community and you call out goodness, service and compassion from each one of us. May we know your presence and your peace enfolding us this evening as we gather in this place. For we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Very much, Reverend Chantal Mason, for a beautiful welcome. So, greetings, everyone. It's truly an honour to be here um, and to see you all. My name is Dr. Sean Natali Sobers. I'm a trustee of Fairfield House CIC and director of the Freedom in the City Festival of Learning. And I welcome you all here, Lord Mayor, distinguished guests, MU, Teclamarian, and family of Blattinger Haraway and all of you watching this online as well. And we are here today for a truly historic occasion and a first for the city of Bath. From the moment Emperor Haile Selassie and Empress Menin Assel made the city of Bath their home during the difficult years in exile, this city and land and people of Ethiopia will be extremely linked. This bond was strengthened in 1958 when the Emperor donated his former residence of Fairfield House to the city to be used for aged citizens. And the Bath Ethnic Minority Senior Citizens Association continues to keep that legacy alive by being the resident organisation and the heartbeat and soul of Fairfield House. The legacy of the Emperor's stay here is also kept alive by the Rastafari community who positioned Fairfield House as a site of spiritual pilgrimage and also by the Ethiopian community who know the affection with which the emperor regarded this city and its people. The emperor was a deeply religious individual and on the site of Fairfield House, he had a chapel made for the Ethiopian Orthodox Tehuido Church of which he was both a faithful member of and also the head leading figure. The site of the chapel at Fairfield is now being turned into a beautiful sacred garden for people's use. Another close bond between Bath and Ethiopia is lesser known, but still highly significant and heartfelt. Blatinkera Hire Walder Selassie was the Ethiopian foreign minister, and during the time living in Bath, he was one of the emperor's closest advisors and friends. When Blatinkera died at Fairfield House on the 19th of September 1938, which is 83 years ago tomorrow, 
the emperor gave an emotional and heartfelt speech at the graveside at Locksbrook Cemetery, in which the emperor himself expresses the most, being almost speechless in being able to express his grief and gratitude. The emperor said, it, was hard, it is hardly necessary to say more of Blattingera's intellectual attainments and how profoundly we feel about the greatness of his character, about his dedication to a purposeful life, his selfless de devotion to help those in trouble, his respect for truth and justice, and his burning patriotic zeal for his country, all of which touch our heart deeply at this hour of his departure. My loyal friend Haraway, it is our words, if our words prove inadequate in extolling what you have done for your country to the fullest of your ability on this mournful occasion, your deeds themselves will certainly speak more convincingly. End of quote. Blattinger's body was exhumed in 1947 and returned to be buried in Ethiopia, but his beautiful grave with Giz and Amharic writing remains at Locksbrook Cemetery which you can see at the, at the front of your order of service. We are honoured that members of Blattinger family are here with us this evening, granddaughter Emu Teclamarian, and tra that have travelled far from London and other areas. I'd like to thank Reverend Chantal Mason, Kevin Reed from Bath Abbey for working with us to make this event happen, and Reverend Guy Bridgewater for believing in this vision over a year ago. Thanks to Reverend Michael de Hendessa and all the priests and, uh, and community of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, uh, Deacon Tesfe, Mulalem Kifle, um, and all that have travelled here. And it really is an honour and a blessing to have you here um, for all that you've done and the, the, the travel that you have done. Also, thanks to Jennifer Sherat, producer of the Freedom and City Festival and team at the University of West of England, Pauline Swaby Wallace at the Bath Ethnic Minority Senior Citizens Association, and William Heath and all the directors of Fairford House CIC. All of those, without their help and their endless support, events like this would not be able to take place. Finally, I want to mention on Monday evening, the Freedom and the City Festival of Learning will be holding an online event with Prince Dr. Asawesson Asarete about the life and works of Blattinger, Haraway, Wilder, Selassie. And you can see the, the leaflet again in your order of service. The Prince has asked me to extend his regards to you all, to Blattinger's family, and he prays we have a beautiful and inspirational occasion this evening and wishes, wishes us well on our journeys home, as do I. So thank you very much. And I hand over to Reverend Mikhail Hindessa. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one true God, Amen. Good evening, all. Tonight, be part of this event is just a blessing. I can't express how grateful we are. It is a historical evening. We all came together to give a tribute to our honorable blood and get higher when this is his life. I am grateful and thankful for everyone here tonight. I'm especially grateful for Reverend Chantel Masson, Dr. Sean, Jennifer Sharat, and all the team behind this event. I would like to say thank you for Mayor of Baz, Baz Ethnic Minority and Citizens, Senior Citizens Association, Baz Abbey, Fairfield House, and all the festival community. Um, everything has been said by Dr. Sean and Reverend Chantal, but tonight I have asked to answer a few questions and to talk about our Ethiopian Orthodox Sahedo Church services. Let me begin with a quote from our Holy Bible from St. Paul. It's taken from Hebrew chapter 10, verses 24. It says, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, 
not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is manner in some, but exhausting one another, and so much the more as you, as you see the daily approaching. The Ethiopian Orthodox Sahadu Church are a public service to surrounding communities. Our church provides just everything. We strongly believe that making difference in people's everyday lives will benefit the believer as well as the whole community. When the church is rooted deeply in its community, its membership is operating in public servants, and the church will impact the lives of the people and the believers who will fulfill our Lord Jesus Christ's mission on the earth. Reading from the book Isaiah of the Torah, our Lord Jesus Christ said that, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has appointed me to preach the gospel of the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captivity, and recovering of sight to the blind, the blind, to set at liberty them that are praised. The basic functions of the church is to be involved in every facet of the life of its believer. We don't have to look hard to look for this in the scriptures to see the value of the community within the church. As it is in the Acts chapter 2, which describes the Holy Spirit as the Pentecost at the early Christian church growth. But here, St. Paul actually comes out and says that Christians shouldn't be failed to meet other Christians. However, some transition says that neglect to call out failure for other believers to meet and to fellow with fellow believers. Early Christians meet with one another in homes to worship and encourage each other, the modern day equivalent for local churches. We believe that when you meet with fellow Christians like this evening, you have godly examples of behavior and beliefs that can spur you in your own spiritual growth. You have access to people who can actively encourage you and walk beside and trials and joys. How can you expect maximize your growth in Christ, in Christ without learning from wisdom and insight of other believers? Just before I conclude my talk tonight, I will repeat the quote of St. Paul. He says, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as it is manner of sin, but exhorting one another, and so much the more you see for daily approaching. Having said this much, now I will try to answer a few questions forwarded to me by the event organizers. Uh, the first question asked was the importance of Giz language. To make it short, Giz is an innocent West semantic language. The language originates from my own country, which is northern part of Ethiopia. It is an important language for study of late ancient Christianity and early Islam. It is the language of some of the earliest Judeo-Christians writing. Its vocabulary can be found throughout the Holy Bible and the Holy Quran. Yet, this classical language is little known beyond the Horn of Africa and taught at just a few universities of worldwide. Giz is a living liturgical language to our church for Ethiopian Orthodox Sahadu Church. The second question was, 
Why we separate sitting for men and women in our church? Our church fathers viewed this separation of sexes during religious practice particularly as an appreciation of natural order. In the early Christians' writing, the separation of sexes was also seen as a safeguard against temptation. One obvious benefit for separate sitting in a church is that it helps ensure that the main focus is on the prayer, not the opposite gender. It is good and healthy that we are attracted one another. That's healthy, that's natural. However, during prayers, we shouldn't be trying to impress anyone except than God. Men and women need space from each other to help them become in tune to the higher slave, which is God. And finally, I have asked why we remove our shoes while in church. Probably you seen, you have seen this in our church, in Ethiopian Orthodox Hadu Church. Everyone should in with a bare foot. There is a holy, holy biblical reason for this. Upon entering the church, much like in Islam, shoes are, shoes are left at the door of the sanctuary. This tradition comes from the biblical story found in Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15. The day Moses met God in the form of burning bushes, and God directed him to remove his shoes because he was standing on the holy ground. And the Ethiopian Orthodox Tohado Church understand the church is in similar way. It is the holy ground, so wearing shoes would be inappropriate. I'm sure I have answered some or few of your questions. Having said this much, let us please ready for the evening prayer. You may sit it. Of course, in our church, all prayer must be done standing in front of God. However, in this occasion, you may sit it. Thank you, may God bless you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. The Samaal, Old Woman of Scudos, Ad Amlak, Amen. Avetu, Amlakachim, Malaitachim, Jesus Christos, the Salamas Adrao, Lelisas, Ladraskan, and Namasagnadlan. Avetu, Amlakachim Hoy, Latuneta Barraket at the Saddle Gildan. Avetu, Amlakachim Hoy, Yenugusachim, and Adama Hellas Lassin. Dihom yeta kabaru ulatin yeta rihol de sallasin. Yota chon, nafsa chon, ba kal ba sa degenet. Ba Abraham be isak ba kovat agavan uridin. Kesar kan kudusan gar dem uridin. Tulu do cha chonin be yalu ba tulu abkalin. Lahagarachin salam lezwachin fikran dunna thar uridin. Avetu amla kachin hoy. Bazi yeta sawasam nabatin yinin. Malcolm is a lot busy, but Salam as Jimra, but Salam the Taswatman, Simon and Dibla Malat in Taralan, Auna Zavasamat, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us. Not to the temptation, 
but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom of the power and the glory unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Lady, Saint, our Saint Gabriel greeted you. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. True Virgin, in conscience as well as in body, blessed are you among all women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Holy Mary, the God bearer at your tokos, pray that you beloved to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, so that he may forgive us. Amen.
مارن میں سالن میں کرن میں اتماتن میں او کیو آئے رب نفس نکو سنا ہے رسول اللہ سے نفس کیو رکھا ہے ملات والد صلی اللہ برا ہے والد صلی اللہ سے حق رہی تھی میں اسے سمائیت میں اور اسے بناو نظر سمائیت
we beseech you, our Lord, to rest, to give eternal rest for your servant, our King, Emperor Haile Selassie, and his most dignitary man, your servant, Royal Selassie and his Christian in them, Royal Selassie, in heaven, in the kingdom of heaven, in the bosom of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine the kingdom, power, and glory unto ages and ages. Amen. O oh, Our Lady, St. Mary, as St. Gabriel greeted you, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you, true virgin, in conscience as well as body. Blessed are you among the women, blessed is the fruit of your womb. Holy Mary, the God-bearer Theotokos, pray that your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, may forgive us our sins. Amen.
For as the Father has life in himself, so has, the, has he given to the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to excuse judgment also, because he is the Son of Man, and the Son of God. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of my own I can of my own self do nothing as I hear I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will but the will of my Father which has sent me. Amen.
Thank you very much. We will have a short um, Ethiopian Orthodox song, so we will sing together.
just uh, translate what we have said. This is a prayer, special prayers for the departed, especially for the clergy members. Probably, if you don't know, uh, Latin hero Wallace Lasse was a deacon. He started his career at the age of 13. He is ordained as a deacon of Ethiopian Orthodox Holy Church. So that we give for him a very, very, very special prayer tonight. And the, pastors and the clergy members just they said that, O oh God of spirit and of all fleshes, who has trampled down death and overthrown the devil and given life of thy world, do the same, Lord, give rest to the soul of the departed Cervantes in a place of brightness, a place of refreshment, a place of response where all sickness and sorrow have held away. Amen. We have just concluded this evening prayer. Thank you very much. May God bless you all. Amen. On behalf of all of us, thank you so much for leading us in prayer this evening. Thank you for joining us online. And as we conclude, let us turn briefly to one of the prayers that was prayed on page five as we close and make our way. Let this be our prayer. Make us, O Lord, worthy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. And so loving God, we pray that you would make us worthy of the love that you have for us that you call us children of God. And may we live lives that are worthy as we recognise your image in each other and as we lay down our lives in service of one another. And may you fill our hearts with your love and your joy and your peace this night and evermore. Amen. So thank you so much. Thank you for all of those who've worked so hard to bring this beautiful service together for us. And may you have a safe journey back, however near or far, and you go with our blessing. And please do come and see us again here at Bath Abbey. Thank you. Honoured to have um, Miss M.U. Tecla Merriam, the granddaughter of Blattinger Hairway Wilder Selassie, to say a few words to close the service. So thank you very much. Madam, Mayor, Sean, and all those who made this possible. I am overwhelmed with such, I just can't express myself. I am so grateful that after 83 years, when my own country has not accepted, has not paid tribute to such a great man, a foreign land for my foreign people, my grandfather, has been finally given his great place, honored by so many. 
and more heard by the whole world, in many parts of the world. He is still referred by so many authors as the greatest author, not only as a diplomat, not only as a minister of foreign affairs, but a great, great author who has published over 28 books. Most of it have been published, and most by handwriting. Thank you all, with all my heart. I cannot tell you what I'm feeling right now. I cannot express it. Thank you very much, especially all these you can hear. Thank you very much. Thank you again and again and again. Thank you. Can you tell a little bit with now? Yes. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not me, I'm not the centre, I'm not the centre.
I mean, yeah, it's a good question. Because when you look back on it, I think, how did I manage to organize this? 